we're going to be talking about transformations of polynomial functions. So we're going to be looking just at the general form of, you know, our polynomial functions as a parent, what happens with them, how to classify them, and how they're moving. Um, before we get into the actual transformation parts, we need to talk about the difference between an odd function and an even function. So a lot of times what happens is people say an even function has a degree of 2 or a degree of 4. It's an even degree. Well, that's not actually the case. With an even function, an even function needs to be symmetric about the y-axis. Okay, so this is reflectional symmetry if it's um, symmetrical across the y-axis. Where an odd function is symmetric about the origin. This would be a rotational, um, rotational symmetry in that case. So when you're looking at this, a lot of people think, Okay, odd function, odd degree, that's not always the case. Um, so it has to be symmetrical across the y-axis, and it has to be either symmetrical about the origin. Uh, the other classification here, and this is a little bit more specific, if you have f of x for an even function, it is supposed to equal the same thing if I plug in negative x. With an odd function, if you plug in a negative x, it's going to result in a negative of that f of x function. So let's look at the graph of this a little bit so you can get a better idea of the symmetric part of it. So for a graph that's even, for instance, this is one of the basics. This is an x cubed or x cubed x squared graph, a, par a parabola, in which you can see that it's symmetric across the y-axis. Um, with an odd function, I could take this function and spin it about the origin, and I would result in the same graph. Okay, so that's rotational. Spin it about the origin and make sure that it matches up to what it was prior to then. So let's look at um, classifying it if you don't have a graph. Sometimes it's a little bit harder to figure out, but we'll be using that f of x stuff there. So let's have the function f of x equals 7x to the fifth minus 2x squared plus 4. Okay, so resulting at this, okay, we're first going to look at it and say, okay, well, the highest degree is a 5, so our options are likely to be an odd. So with that, we're going to use that odd set on how to calculate whether or not this is actually true. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our function and plug in a negative x value. And we're going to see what happens if we plug that in as a negative x value. So substituted in that negative x, what's going to result here is you're trying to figure out, okay, when I take a negative to the power of 3 or the power of 4, whatever, does it result in a negative changing that coefficient to negative, okay? So if I'm looking at that 7, uh, negative x to the power of 5, uh, anything to the power of 5, if it's a negative, is going to result in a negative. So I have a negative 7x to the fifth. Then, for that next term, I have negative x squared, which is going to be a positive. 
but times that negative 2 is going to result in a still negative 2x squared plus 4. So if I'm looking at this, if I were to pull out, because if it's an odd function, it's supposed to give us this. Okay, so notice that negative is on the outside. So we're going to pull out that negative and see if I pull out that negative, did I get the original? So that would give me 7x to the fifth plus 2x squared minus 4. Well, I can see that this function here is not the same as that function there. So since those are not the same function, this is actually not an odd function. So this results in a neither. So you're going to be using this information here with that f of negative x to see if it results in that situation. Same thing would apply if you're looking at an even function. But we're looking at an odd function to start with because of that degree of 5. All right, so the last thing that I want to talk to you guys about is the actual transformation of things. So, for instance, I have a graph here. Um, that parent function is y equals x cubed. And our goal is to find the equation for the blue one. So, um, when we're doing this, we need to figure out, okay, how did the... How did the origin shift? So this is talking about that point of symmetry. How did that move? So my point of symmetry originally is here at 0, 0. So I need to figure out, okay, well, it shifted to here. Sorry, my board's off a little bit. So looking at this, the point of origin moved to 3, comma 1. So similar to like when we were doing quadratics and we're talking about how that vertex is shifting, um, similar concept here in which we know it's going to be x minus 3 cubed plus 1. So remember inside that parentheses it goes opposite of what we see. Since it was a positive 3, it goes x minus 3. Now, notice I left this spot blank here because we need to talk about um, how this graph has shifted in terms of our stretch, technically. So if you notice, the branches of those arms have actually gotten narrower, which means that we're going to have a larger number. Remember that if it's below 1, the arms get wider. If it's above 1, the arms get narrower. So what we're going to do to kind of find this is we have a point here at 1, 1 on our parent. And then our point here that's going to kind of match up a little bit is going to be 4, 3. So when we're looking at that, we transitioned 1 over from our origin. And we had a vertical stretch on the original as 1. So we're going to look at, sorry, I should do this off the origin here, the vertical stretch off of this one, which results in 2. That is going to give us our stretch. So this right here is my equation of that parent function because it was stretched vertically by 2. Um, so that's how we look at our parent function, similar to when we were dealing with quadratics, how to shift. Um, it just might change a little bit based on the origin if you're dealing with an, um, an odd degree or if it's an even degree, you know, you're looking for that parabola shape.